In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple watercolor painting using one of your photographs and Adobe Sketch. Adobe Sketch is a free app available from the App Store. It's available for iPhone and for Android devices as well. You could be using an iPad, an iPad mini, an iPhone, or one of the Android devices um, with Adobe Sketch. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up a new project and I'm going to do that by touching on that plus sign in the lower right hand corner and then I'm going to choose a format and I like to use the 18 by 24 so when I touch on that it brings up a blank piece of paper. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a photo to use as my basis of this painting. Touch the little plus sign, it brings up the add layer, and I want to choose image layer. And I want to get an image from my phone, so I'm going to touch on my iPhone, wherever your images are in your library. So I'm going to tap on that image, And I'm going to bring it into Adobe Sketch on my piece of paper. I'm going to make it a little bit larger by pinching out. And then I'm going to press on Done. And now I want to bring that sketch layer on top of the photo layer. So I'm going to touch it and I'm just going to drag it with my finger until it's on top. And now I'm ready to paint. So I want to choose the watercolor brush which is the last brush on the left hand side and when I tap on it I can go ahead and choose a color to begin so I am just going to put my finger on the color button which is the last one, the last circle and I'm going to drag it onto that area of white where that horse um, is mainly white and I'm going to check the opacity which is that middle circle I'm just going to make it a little less transparent and now I'm going to pinch with my fingers so I can see this area of color. So I'm going to begin uh, by making this brush a little bit larger and then I'm going to start to color. It's really hard to see so you have to be pretty vigilant about looking at what you're doing and as you do this, the color is going to spread. So that's okay in some of the areas, but other areas you're going to want to stop that bleeding of color and that's where you're going to look at the little fan down the bottom left hand corner and when you touch that it'll stop the paint from running. So sometimes you like it to run, sometimes you want to stop it, especially when you're at the area at the top where you see that um, curve of the horse. You don't necessarily want it to bleed because you want to get a better definition of the form there. So I'm going to move on with my color and I'm going to drag it out so I have a little bit darker area and then I'm going to paint that area as well. I'm going to let that bleed and then I'm going to start moving around and I'm going to move the you know, color as well, change the color and I'm moving the image and as I do that I see more areas of color and then I'm going to stop it there because uh, I don't want that to bleed to the end and I see this nice area this kind of sepia tone there so I'm going to kind of grab that and I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and I'm going to sneak in there a couple swipes stop it from bleeding and then I'm going to move on I can always go back and erase areas if I need to but keep in mind what you want to do is you want to have this look very fluid, uh, very easy, and, and not forced at all. So you're going to continue on this way until you have all of these areas of color filled in. And just kind of trust yourself as you're going. Uh, and as you go along, you can check it. But I'm just going to kind of do this quickly right now. stop that and it's it's really a simple process and it also helps you as an artist to see 
the shape and the color change and the subtlety of it so that when you go to real tools, when you're using actual watercolor and you know physical paper, uh, you know it is going to help you um, create a better painting. So as you're working, you want to check and see what you've done. What you want to do is go to that image layer, and you want to tap it in order to bring up this screen with some choices things you can do with the image layer and one of those choices is I can temporarily turn it off. So the little eyeball up in the right hand corner of this image layer window, I'm going to touch that and that's going to turn off the image layer underneath. So that now I can get a look at what I'm doing and I can see that there's some areas I need to fill in and this is going to help me as I go through uh, my painting in what exactly I need to do in order to cover all those areas. So I'm going to bring up that layer again. I'm going to touch that little eye icon and now I'm going to touch the the workspace again and I can continue on. And here's what I want you to think about. You can see very subtly the difference between the areas you have painted over and the areas that still need paint. So it takes a little bit of discerning and it may be a little hard to see in this video, but as you work, I believe you're going to be able to figure it out. So I can see on his leg, um, the areas that I haven't painted over look just a little bit more pixelated than the areas I have. So I'm just going to kind of continue on. I'm going to make the brush a little smaller because it's a smaller area. And I'm going to continue changing the color painting with the watercolor brush, and again, stopping the bleeding where I think I do not want to have it bleed off the edge. Or, you know, the edge of the, the horse's leg there. Now, if you've done something that you need to take off, you can use the, um, the undo arrow, and that is up at the top of the screen, kind of towards the left, and I can hit undo as many times as I need, and then I can go back and repaint if necessary. make the brush smaller as they get into some of these small areas. And then another important thing I want you to think about as you're doing this, and I haven't gotten to this part yet, I haven't done anything with his head, but the very dark areas uh, are, are, are you know, going to um, make you know, your image stand out. It's going to give it that little pop. So when you do something like the harness, you want to change the brush to something like this smaller, um, this isn't a watercolor brush, I think it's kind of like a, a multi-purpose brush, but if I make that small and I come in there, I could grab a color, but let, let's say I grab this dark color here, and then I want to color that in very dark, and that's going to make that area pop out, especially with the eyes and the hooves, um, as you see in the finished painting. So let's just take a look at what we have so far. I'm going to turn this off again. And then let's just take a look. And you can see, you know, that part of this is developing. And when you look at the finished piece, um, you can see how I've, I have filled in different areas of color and used some, some darks to kind of finish it off. 